What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Mount Mograph Summit 58, the six secret tools inside Adobe After Effects. You might know one, you might know none. Uh, moving forward, I hope this video is helpful. Uh, just right off the bat, I'll give you a quick summary. I uh, do apologize for not posting a video in some time. Had a bunch of stuff going on, one of which was the update to the Motion 2 script that I've been working real hard on. It's uh, pretty much finished and should be launching really, really soon. Uh, free update for existing people. Uh, and then I've had a ton of work going on for my job and whatnot, and also unfortunate family stuff happening. Um, but luckily, everything is kind of uh, settled down for now, so I'm back and I will be uploading as regular as I ever have, which is super inconsistent. So anyway, welcome back to Mount Mograph. My name's Matt, as always, uh, and thanks for checking out the channel. So uh, six secret things in After Effects that you might not know are some tools, uh, functions, and expressions, all of which can be very helpful uh, when you use them uh, how they're intended, I guess. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and just start with something that is uh, kind of fun. So let's go ahead and just create a uh, new object in our composition. And I'll just uh, put my anchor point in the middle of the square here. So I have a square in the middle of this scene. So if you select a item, this is like a, a secret little After Effects thing. You can hold shift and click uh, this little title right here. And you're going to hear a sheep sound, uh, which is super annoying. So that's one of the little funny things that after um, Adobe has done to After Effects. Uh, but moving forward, the other things will actually be helpful. So uh, when you have an animation, there's a couple ways that you go about animating. Uh, the one I tend to stick to is just the straight uh, keyframing of properties uh, and setting keyframes like this and then making a change and it'll automatically update. So uh, there are some other uh, alternatives to setting keyframes and one of which, if you go up into your window, let's go ahead and grab something called Motion Sketch. So select this and it's going to pop up. You can dock it if you like. I'm going to keep this window just floating around right here. And it's a pretty powerful tool uh, to rough in animation. So uh, while we're over in this window area, let's go and grab another one. And uh, this one is called the Smoother. So let's go ahead and grab the Smoother and we'll just uh, well, you can float it wherever you can dock it somewhere. Um, I guess I will actually dock it just so it's not floating in uh, in the way. So these panels um, can be a little confusing, uh, but they can also be a little cool. So one of the things is when you have an object selected, you'll notice that these uh, features, at least in the motion ske sketch window, becomes activated and you can say start capture. So what motion sketch does is it tracks uh, the movement that you actually drag your animation over the course of your composition's time. So what you're gonna do is you can set your capture speed to 100%, let's just leave it at that, and actually let's just do a little test uh, preview. And I'm actually gonna make this composition just a little bit shorter, down to eight seconds, uh, so we, uh, we can just rock through this real quick. So if you click Start Capture, uh, nothing's gonna happen. Your mouse is gonna change to a little X thing, and once you click and hold uh, your object, it's going to start uh, giving you an outline. And as you can see, I'm drawing, it uh, looks like I'm going to draw a flower. Uh, this is not a very good flower. Um, and then it's hit the end of our timeline. So what we're gonna see is a path, um, quite literally a sketch of our motion. And if you go ahead and press U to look at your keyframes of your position, we have created uh, quite a bunch of keyframes. And when we play back our animation, you'll see that our object is now actually moving on this motion sketch path, um, which is pretty interesting. And uh, one of the things that kind of goes hand in hand with this motion sketch is the motion, as you can see, uh, you can either just click it and literally see how many uh, hundreds of keyframes we have, or you can go into your graph editor and see this uh, mess. Um, what you can do is use something called the smoother. Um, which is really helpful for tracking points, which I'll also show you in this video, and also for the motion sketch. So if you select the position property, it'll select all your keyframes. And let's go back into our uh, graph editor right here. And this is just going to be a way to visualize what's happening. So uh, right now you have apply to, you can do a temporal path or a spatial path. Um, we're going to do the spatial path. Obviously it's the only one we have selected and our tolerance um, is the uh, ability for it to um, change more points 
uh, if that makes any sense. So by turning up your tolerance, you're saying like you can change more. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be as close to our original path. So if we say uh, like maybe 10 and we click apply, as long as your keyframes are highlighted, we're going to see that uh, quite a bunch of our keyframes are actually removed both in our graph editor and our view. So once again, we go from this uh, to this and you'll notice that some of the path actually changed. So for example, if we set this down to one, and clicked apply, we're going to get a smaller amount of change because you're limiting the, uh, the constraints of this function. So if we knock this up to 20, for example, and click apply, you'll notice that our points are pretty minimal at this point and our path of motion is quite a bit smoother. So now when I play this, it's going to be a lot closer to what I had originally drawn. It's not going to be as jerky um, and keyframed every single uh, position. So you can keep messing around with this uh, spatial path and get some pretty nice looking motion. Um, so that is the first little thing, the motion sketch and the smoother. And I'll show you how you can do a couple other things with this. So if I just go back, uh, command Z a couple times, we're going to see our original path. And without using the smoother, you can actually, uh, I'll duplicate this layer here and just delete the positional keyframes and move it over here. Uh, you can, when you do your motion sketch right off the bat, you can also turn your capture speed down to 50% um, and you can turn your smoothing so it's gonna automatically smooth as you go uh, so you don't have to do the second step and you'll be working with less points right off the bat so your motion won't be as accurate. Um, you can also do that. So if I click start capture, I get my little crosshair. I'm gonna grab the second object and as you can see, our playback is a little bit slower and it's actually gonna be smoothing out our path as we go. So whenever you let go, the uh, motion sketch will stop. So let go. And as you can see, our points are already quite a bit smoother than the first go where we had hundreds of points. So um, that's a nice way to get some roughed in animation uh, real quick if you're under a time constraint or even if you want to just get some nice organic movement. So uh, I'm going to delete this top layer here and we'll keep working um, with this layer right here. So one of the things is once you have this path here and you want to smooth it, um, you are in um, action. And once we do that, so I'll just smooth this path, we have some points. So that's one way to do it, but sometimes this motion is just not what uh, you really want. Um, sometimes you can right click it and maybe go to keyframe um, interpolation and go down to auto bezier and try to make this path a little bit smoother and uh, maybe it gets all jacked up and it's just not what you want. So if you go back in time, there's a couple other things you can do one of which is by adding an expression. So if we hold option and click our little stopwatch over here, we're gonna add a simple smooth expression. So what this is, is you just type smooth and we're gonna do parentheses, uh, so two parentheses, and we're gonna type in two values. Um, one of which is going to be, let's call it 0.6 and comma, and then we're gonna do uh, really whatever number you want. Let's do 25, uh, some nice numbers. And what this is gonna do is attempt to smooth our path as we go. So if you click this little button right here, it's going to preview um, post the expression we put in. So uh, as you can see, our path is different. And this is a different way to smooth the path that we've created. So when you do this, um, your expression is actually smoothing the path as it goes and calculating this for you. So that's another way to kind of smooth out your keyframes if you don't want to actually change um, and you want to keep a lot of those. And if you go to your graph, you can actually see how much it's changed based on our expression, as well as edit it down here. And if you do not have that editor, you can uh, click this little button and go to show expression editor. And then from there, you can see how much your numbers change your expression. So I just knocked that up to 43. Didn't look like it did a whole lot because um, that's our accuracy of this expression. So why don't we turn this up to seven and we should see uh, quite a bit of changes. And now we almost have a flat animation, which we uh, do not want. So let's keep it at that original one. All right, so now we have this wonderful uh, expression um, and it's smoothing our path as it goes. But two things, this takes up the processor of your computer. Um, it's not a lot, but it does slow it down sometimes and also you can't really work with these keyframes um, or add another expression on top of it. So this brings up one of our second tools of the day or second secrets. If you go up into your um, animation window or your layer window, sorry, uh, which one actually is it? Um, the, your layer window, 
no animation. There we go. And go down to keyframe assistant and go to convert expression to keyframes. What this is going to do is calculate the expression um, throughout our entire timeline and give you keyframes for it, removing the expression. So if we click this, it's going to process. And as you can see, we once again get hundreds of points. However, our points have uh, turned off this expression so I can actually delete it and our path is going to be smoother. Um, so that's a nice way to, as you can see, that uh, the smoothness really helped out our animation. So as it plays, um, we can still be pretty happy with this. Um, and then once again, we have tons of points, which is not always great to work with. We can select all our points and go into our smoother and maybe turn this down to 10 and click apply. And that'll cut back uh, the amount of points we have and make it so we can really go ahead and edit these paths uh, value uh, much more easily just by clicking them on the timeline. So uh, with that uh, said, you can start to see that there's some tools in After Effects that don't necessarily get used, but can be pretty helpful for certain situations. So now that we have this uh, smoother animation, why don't we go ahead and jump over to a, another composition. So I'll do Command N for a new composition. And let's go ahead and create a uh, another really cool tool I'll show you about. So if you double click into your project panel, you can import something, which is not the tip, but I'm going to select this MP3. I just have uh, chilling on my desktop and I'm going to drag this into my timeline. So if you double tap L, you will see your waveform of this file and I can even preview it by pressing period on the keyboard on the numeric keyboard. Um, and it's going to play and you can probably hear some music. So um, how can this be helpful? Well, once again, After Effects does have a tool that's very little uh, uh, lightly talked about. I'm really losing my words here. But if you select the MP3 layer, waveform uh, layer, or like .dot .af um, file, you can go up into your animation, keyframe assistant, and convert audio to keyframes. So when you do this, it's going to create a null, and it actually goes really quick. And if you press U to see your keyframes, we have thousands and thousands of keyframes, not really thousands, probably about 200, but it is called audio amplitude. And we're going to have a couple sliders that get generated into our effect controls, uh, courtesy of after effects. So as I scrub across this timeline, we're going to see that the values are changing. So we have one, if it's a uh, stereo and not super compressed, like this song, you would have a left channel and a right channel. Um, but for our purposes, uh, we can actually probably just work with the both channels because the waveform is identical on both sides. So what do we do with this data? Well, as we scrub across our timeline, the null that was created doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything at all, um, but we have data that's changing. So that's gonna be a cool thing that we can go ahead and implement onto our object using very simple expressions and the pick whip. So if we go ahead and create a new object here, and I'm just gonna center this anchor point, uh, I'll drag it over here, and why don't we go to the scale property? So holding option, um, that's how you set an expression. Well, we're going to click into our scale property. And what we're going to do is we have transform.scale, which is this property. And additionally, whatever the value is, you can just type it value. And what we're going to do is times the value of our scale property um, and grab this little pick whip. Um, and we're going to just drag it over to our both sliders because we have some numbers here. So if we click that, um, it has now added it to our expression. And when I let go, you're going to see that our numbers have gotten insane. They jumped up to a thousand. So at this end of this expression, why don't we just divide this by like, um, 50 maybe. Oh, you know what? I, uh, typed the wrong, uh, symbol there. That's supposed to be a divide. Uh, so divided by 50. So now I have this, uh, animation that is driven by the values of our audio. So if I press zero on my keyboard to preview this animation real quick, uh, and let's hear. Uh, so now it's going to play, and our it, 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 the data uh, corresponds directly to our animation. So once again, um, it's quite jittery. You can go ahead and click your slider properties, and since these are values and all jittery like this, you can click them all, select them all, and go up into your smoother, and once again, just apply that, and as you can see, you can smooth out uh, pretty much any keyframe. So now we have less data to work with, and also our scale property is going to react much smoother to this um, expression that we've connected to it. So this will also work on positional properties. It really actually will work on any property if you can get pretty creative. So why don't I create uh, one more object here and I'll just move my anchor point there. Let's go ahead and connect this to our position. So if I select the position, another trick, if you don't know about this, you can right click your position and say separate dimensions and your X and Y dimensions are going to be on separate channels. So if we want to only affect the Y property, 
of this object right here. What I can do is hold option and click the Y position and drag my, let's just type value. And we'll say the value um, is going to get plus parentheses. Um, whoops. So parentheses. And then in the middle of your parentheses, drag your pick whip over to both channels. And that's going to add it there. So we're going to say that times two. So what we're going to say is it's going to get the value it already has um, times two of whatever this slider is. So in this case, it's going to be like 37. Uh, so now when I play this animation, you're going to see that our Y corresponds to the data that we have attached to it. So as this plays, you're going to see that it corresponds nicely also with the scale. And then what you can do, um, since our Y position is locked, you can actually still move on the X axis axis um, however you would like however the y um, will also be affected by whatever the value is um, plus whatever the value of the slider is I'm really trying my best to explain it. it's kind of a weird concept but it does make some sense so that's a cool way to kind of link something dynamically with audio and once again this will also work with uh, stuff like color uh, so if we go into our effects and presets and type in like a color rama or something and just drop this onto our um, square here that's already driven um, positionally we can go into our input phase and on the phase shift hold option and click the phase shift and what we're gonna do is type um, let's see so the phase shift is out of 360 because it's a rotation so why don't we drag our pick whip and we'll just grab this both channels uh, one more time which is 12.8786 and why don't we times it by something so we get a bigger change so we'll just say times four and so the value is going to be larger. So now what happens, um, if I toggle out of here and just take a look, is that our color is actually going to change with the beat of the song, as well as the Y position of the um, uh, square will also change, which can be pretty dang fun. So uh, those couple things are some tools that you might not know about After Effects. Um, and can be really, really helpful. You have the smoother, you have motion sketch, you have expressions to keyframes, and you have expressions to, um, or audio to keyframes. So those couple things can be really, really powerful as well as linking the channels. And so along with the sheep thing, I suppose I owe you one more little secret. And if you're ever adding expressions and you're not too good with it, and you click option on any value, um, next to the pick whip, there's actually a little arrow you can click and it's going to show you um, some expressions that you can use just by clicking and it'll give you the data to enter and then you can just pick whip whatever property you want. So I'll just disable that because that was uh, nothing. But anyway, I hope those are some interesting tips and maybe gives you a couple ideas for some upcoming animations. And uh, I hope you had a lot of fun with it. So anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. I'll have some more videos coming out soon covering some uh, actual projects and workflows and all that. Uh, this was just kind of a fun way to get back into it and maybe show you some tools that you didn't know anything about. So anyway, this was Matt from Mount MoGraph. Keep rocking on. Subscribe if you like this. Like the video if you liked it. Otherwise, dislike it. Um, you guys rock. And thanks again for checking out the channel. Peace out.